people who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 6. Please make sure you share and subscribe our channel thread tonic. Account 1. Random people coming out of the woods is something you don't ever get used to, really. I grew up on a drilling rig my dad ran. When I was old enough to stand up and steer a pickup between hay bales, I started doing that and pulling wells, oil well repair. With cell phones, it's a lot less common, but vividly remember skipping rocks at a pond and meeting a few rondos who broke down nearby looking for a ride. Account 2. I was in southeast Alaska for around 15 days a few summers ago. We had just finished up dinner and washed out our pots and pans and gone to our respective tents in the trees along the shore we had stopped at for the night. The spot we had chosen to camp wasn't ideal. The tide was set to come in pretty far that night, and it would only leave us with a few feet before the water would be lapping at our tent flaps. But we also didn't care that much as it had been raining and incredibly windy that day, so kayaking was hardly any fun at all, and we needed to stop. About 45 minutes after we had said goodnight to one another, I heard some splashing in the tidal zone, probably 20 feet from my tent. I didn't think much of it because a few times before when in Alaska we had stopped at beaches where the tide had risen to within a few feet of our tents. Anyway, I try to ignore it, although in my mind I'm freaking the fuck out. Our camp spot was less than ideal if you wanted to escape in the middle of the night. We were at the base of a relatively steep hill that was covered in alders and slick with rain. To the left, probably 70 feet from where we camped, there was a rocky outcrop that went out into the water and was about 20 feet tall and steep enough that you couldn't climb it. If, for example, a grizzly bear. And there were a lot out that time of the summer. We had seen four or five that day alone, patrolling the beaches wanted to see what was going on down the beach and walked towards us from the right, it would basically seal off our movement, sort of like putting the cork back in the wine bottle, not many places to go anyway. After 15 minutes of hearing splashing, I start to try to rationalize it enough to go to sleep, but that's when I start hearing something other than splashing. This incredibly high-pitched gargling sound breaks through the night's relative quiet, it sounded as though two cats had gotten into a fight, but every time they let out a scream, the other cat would push the one cat's head underwater. This went on for a good 20 minutes. After it died down, I hear, that's weird, huh, from the other tent. Obviously trying to downplay the incident, I, being scared as fuck, just reply, yep, going to sleep. Another 15 minutes pass without much sound, but then the same gargling breaks through the night, this time much, much closer. The noises are deeper this time, more guttural. It sounds like an old man fighting with a cat. And each time either of them shriek, they are forced underwater. The splashing intensifies, and it sounds like it's right outside my tent. I think that the fear of whatever was going on eventually just zapped me of all energy, because eventually I fell asleep. I just remember that I didn't move a muscle, and I didn't move for so long that all of my muscles ached after a while, and I could feel my heart beat in my throat all night long. Anyway, we woke up, had breakfast, broke down the tents, and got back on the road. Didn't hear it ever again. A few weeks later, I did some Googling, and I'm pretty sure that it was just some sea otters fighting each other in the intertidal zone, but it was scary as fuck. I'll link the YouTube audio of the noises if I can find it, TLDR, lying in the dark in Alaska and hear guttural screams and what sounds like someone being drowned, in the pitch black in the middle of nowhere, 20 feet outside of my tent. Account 3 archaeologist here, we had found a rural graveyard on USFS land in the middle of some mountain foothills in Nevada and had started recording some features of the site. We noticed there were these creepy little porcelain angel figures on top of the graves, meaning that these were not super old graves or at least were being somewhat maintained. We didn't have enough time to finish before sundown, so we wrapped it up and headed back to the bunkhouse. When we came back Monday to finish the site, all the angels had been systematically covered by old cow patties, like someone was trying to hide them from us. That meant A, people had been watching us that Friday afternoon, unbeknownst to us B, people didn't want us there. 
We called the USFS archaeologist we had been working with, and she told us to finish and leave as quickly as possible. Account 4. I'm an avid hunter in a rural town in Missouri. My family hunts on public land, and we have hunted on the same ridge for multiple generations. The land used to be kept by a large sawmill that used mules to drag the trees to the mill in the nearby town. We have found all sorts of crazy stuff, railroad spikes in the middle of the woods, horseshoes grown into the side of a tree where they hung it on a limb. One of the craziest things I found in the woods was where a wagon had fell off the side of the ridge, taking the mules with it. It's something like 200 FT drop, so they just left everything down there. I hiked by this thing a hundred times going to and from our hunting spot. The woods all rotted from it, but the metal brackets and wheels were still there, grown over and taken back by nature. One day while walking in the woods, I get to my spot that is probably half a mile from that spot. And I've been sitting there for a few hours when I hear what sounds like people yelling down the ridge followed by a loud scream and a crashing sound. I grabbed my gear and start on my way out. When I get by where the wagon debris was a flower wreath laid over the wagon, but I've never seen anyone down there except for my family members, and no one knows who put it there. We talked about that night back at camp, and we could only assume that if someone had died in that wagon... Maybe it was some distant grandchild or something, and that day was the anniversary of it happening. But that still doesn't explain the sounds that I had heard. I still hunt down in the same place as always, but I've never heard or seen anything since. Account 5. I'm a geophysicist, and I'm out to do survey work about 1.3 of the time. A lot of our surveys are in remote locations. I was doing one in my home province of Saskatchewan, very far north, about a six-hour drive from the nearest small town, and then a 45-minute helicopter ride into our camp. It's isolated, and this survey began in October of last year, so it's quite dark a lot of the time. My room was on the attic of our only building, and the wood-burning stove that heated the place was directly below my room, so I often had to leave the window open at night. One night I had the window open and I could hear singing from outside, which was creepy, but I figured it was just a member of the crew who can't sleep. The next night, I hear the same thing. At the same time, about 3 a.m., and this time, I get up to go to the bathroom. Everyone else was sleeping in cots in a large open room, and when I'm heading back to my room, I realize that everyone is in their cots. I don't hear the singing again for a few days, and it stops creeping me out until about a week later, I wake up and hear it, I go to check, and once again everyone is in their cots. I put my huge winter jacket on, I head outside and walk towards the sound, I step right up to the shore of the lake that we're on, and I hear it coming from somewhere across the lake. The moon is up and very bright, and I see somebody in the lake, which is absolutely freezing, as in it has started to ice over. At this point, I am terrified, but I call out in case they needed help. They dive down under the water, and I don't see them ever again or hear the singing. It feels like a dream to this day. What the fuck? Account 6. While in the Marine Corps, everyone has a story or heard someone who was out in the field and saw weird stuff on knife, vice, and goggles, I was in Kuwait near the Iraq border. It is the middle of nowhere, miles and miles of sand. We saw some guy walking in the middle on the Nye. By himself, I have no clue where he was going or doing. My guess he was hurting animals and lost one and was looking for it is probably as likely that he was a ghost. Account 7. I worked at a Boy Scout camp for two years in high school as a summer gig. A requirement for the scouts to earn their Wilderness Survival Merit Badge was for them to set up shelters among other activities. Before I was staff, the scouts would go 12-ish miles into the woods for their night out to a place called Shelby's Dream. The stories of kids waking up screaming, talking about seeing ghosts running at them, being hung from trees, and other wild experiences. Everybody wrote those kids off, called them crazy. Eventually, there were things people couldn't explain, such as staff members waking up with scratches and cuts on their bodies. The backstory of the place is that there was a mass killing of Southern soldiers, American Civil War, and Shelby was the daughter of the Southern captain who was hung with his men. She supposedly came back to the camp to find her father and all his men hung from the trees.
We stopped sending the groups to that location a few years back. One night, my cabin mates and I went out there to see if the rumors were true about that place. I heard voices, cries, and screams that echoed in the forest. There's a point where you cross a bridge, and once over the bridge, the wilderness stops. The woods continue, but there's no noise from animals or insects on that side. Absolute silence. That was one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced. Account 8. When I worked in a kennels up the mountains, in the depths of winter it would be dark by 5 p.m. I'd be in the office finishing up some paperwork. At this stage, everyone would be gone, and this particular building was a bit away from the main building, car park, etc. All the dogs would be sleeping by this time after a busy day. You could hear a pin drop. Sometimes I would hear heavy, definite, slow footsteps, so much so that I would get up, come out onto the main floor ready to explain we are now closed, but no one would be there. It used to freak me out a couple of times. I would even check the dogs, in case it was coming from a kennel, but nope, all sound asleep. Account 9. One night I was driving out on a remote country round, and it was snowing pretty heavily. I got a call from my mom telling me to get home, as there was a pretty large blizzard, and the roads were only going to get worse. At a T in the road, I went to make a turn, only to see someone standing in the middle of the road in a light hoodie. With no houses around for about a half mile, I'm not sure why anyone would be walking out in a blizzard. As I swerved past, the person didn't flinch and looked right into my window. However, it was too dark to make out a face. It stopped snowing shortly after I got home, and the next day I went back out to the road to see if I could find any traces. I could clearly see my car tracks, but there were no footprints anywhere. It definitely could have been some kook out for a late night hike but it was still pretty creepy. Account 10. So in college, I'd wait for my roommate to get off of work at the new parking garage my campus built. He was a security guard on the night shift. Nothing too crazy most of the time. But one day he finished his shift, and I told him I'd meet him outside. He leaves the garage and says, I don't think you're going to believe me when I tell you this. But I have to tell someone while it's fresh in my mind. The next part is how I remember him telling me while we sat in the car. I was in the office chatting it up with the custodian when he pointed to the security camera screen and told me there's a guy in the stairwell. We both looked at the camera closely, and sure enough, there's a guy just standing on a landing in the stairwell in an old-timer suit, bowler hat and everything. The security guard told me he'd start cleaning at the bottom of the stairs, and if he saw the gentleman, he'd tell him to leave. I told him I'd come up the landing and do the same. I didn't see him on my way to the landing, so I made my way to the stairs while calling out that the garage was closed for the night in case he was hiding. While walking through the stairwell, I startled the custodian because he was expecting to see Mr. Suit as well, but no one left the stairwell at the bottom. I told him I had to check out the rest of the grounds, and that maybe he slipped out another way. Even though there was really no way either of us could have missed him, I'm approaching the ramp of the next-to-last landing of the top of the garage, and I see an older woman in an old-timer dress and umbrella. She's going up the ramp in the distance, I yell. She shouldn't be up here and swiftly pick up the pace before I lose sight of her going to the top level. As soon as I arrive to the ramp, she was ascending. I don't see her. I got to the top of the ramp and see a kid skateboarding on the last level of the garage. I tell him the garage is closed and he shouldn't be up here, but at the same time wondering where that woman went. The skateboarder apologized and said he'd walk down with me if that would be okay. We get to the bottom and I say, Hey man, you see anything weird at this garage tonight? The skateboarder looked at me with the most confusing stare and said, well, there was this older woman standing at the edge of the garage, and I didn't see her come up the ramp. I screamed she should be careful not to get too close to the edge. I went to pick up my board, and when I looked up, she was gone. I ran to the edge to see if she jumped, but nothing. She was gone. She was wearing this old-looking dress and umbrella. I didn't want to tell the kid I saw the exact same woman because I was too freaked out. I suggested that it was probably a costume party and some people were messing around. I couldn't explain the disappearances, though. He said he thought the same thing, but he remembered his boss telling him that years ago, 20s era, people would dress up in their Sunday duds and walk through the park in town. 
The park was right where this parking garage was. Account 11. I used to work as a tree planter and have spent thousands of hours in the deep woods. To be honest, there is nothing creepy in the forest other than carcasses and the sound of animals. But I will always say that the forest is alive, and you need to respect it because in the woods you're on nature's terms. If you don't, the forest will disrespect you back. It is very easy to become lost and disoriented without a compass, and there are many perils that the woods can manifest to injure, maim, or kill you. Don't fuck with the woods. Account 12. Probably a little too late to the party, but here we go. I've seen a few things working in remote locations on land and working oil rigs, platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, but I definitely think the eeriest was the one I never saw, but heard the countless stories from the people who had to investigate it. On a platform offshore, a man went missing during his nightly rounds. After searching the platform top to bottom, they found his hard hat, tool belt, work boots, and all his personal shit neatly placed on the grating near the railing, and he was M.I.A. Everyone has their stories of maybe it was just suicide, because as it turns out, living on a metal structure surrounded by water for weeks at a time takes its toll on you. Some people have their theories. He found out his wife was cheating on him at home. Some people even think it was nefarious and someone made him do it because he was having an affair with their wife. The oil field can be a dark place, both mentally and physically. All I know is jumping into the dark abyss of the ocean and letting the waves swallow you up is a terrifying concept to me. Second story happens along a dead stretch of highway around 3 a.m. I was making the drive back home from the docks, and around 3 a.m., I started getting so exhausted it was getting unsafe for me to drive. I was falling asleep, slapping myself in the face and sticking my head out the windows, trying to do anything I could to stay awake and make it home, but nothing was working. So due to the time and location, there wasn't any safe places I could park to get a little bit of rest. So in my sleep-deprived state, and I figured since I hadn't seen anyone else on the highway with me, I'd just pull over to the side of the road and get some rest, I leave my truck running with the lights on and set a alarm for 45 minutes. Well, on that truck, when you put it into park, it automatically unlocks your doors. Thank God. Right before I fell asleep, I had the presence of mind to relock all my doors because about 10 minutes before my alarm went off, I woke up to the sound of the door handle on the rear passenger's door on my truck getting repeatedly yanked on and it was shaking the whole truck. Needless to say, I was awake now and full of energy. All I can remember from the adrenaline dump that happened was I slammed the truck in gear and did probably the best burnout that truck has ever done and threw rocks and smoke at whoever was behind me the rest of the drive home. I remember swerving left and right trying to make sure if someone was in the bed of my truck that I'd knock them out. I think the creepiest thing about that whole ordeal for me is there isn't a way for me to prove that it happened. At the time the incident happened, I had been awake over 24 hours. But I've also heard instances of that happening to people on that stretch of road. Call it a ghost. A dream or some kids playing pranks on the poor people passing through town. But all I know is I'll never fall asleep parked on the side of the road again. Account 13. I don't work in a remote place. But I have a house out in the middle of nowhere that I rarely ever get to see. The town has a population of roughly 30,040 people all of whom have acres and acres between each other. My in-laws who live nearby have had been noticing at least two or three of their chickens missing every other day and assumed it was a fox, the usual. Anyway, one night myself and my wife are doing a bit of work on our fences around our land, and we hear this thrumming noise coming from the adjacent acreage, which is completely overgrown. You can't even see through it, let alone walk through it. The only way I can describe it is like a cat purring. But you know, a fucking massive cat. The entire bushland seemed to reverberate with the sound. Needless to say, we made a hasty retreat and try not to go out at night when we're there, more so than we did before due to all the undiscovered mines. Account 14. I've spent quite a bit of time in remote areas both for my job, wildland firefighter, and recreationally. Never seen anything really weird but the creepiest thing I've seen was near one of our prescribed burn units in the middle of nowhere. We used to regularly see the same truck out there driven by the most stereotypical creepy-looking dude you could think of. 
Always with a different, much younger woman in the passenger seat, we of course reported him to local law enforcement, but I moved to a new job shortly after, so I don't know if anything ever came of it. Account 15. When I was in college, I interned with the Forest Service. A lot of the time, I just spent patrolling hiking trails. Right near Grandfather Mountain, I thought I heard someone yelling for help, but my supervisor told me to ignore it. Apparently, someone went missing in the area in the 60s and was never found and people would hear that voice all the time. I heard it twice more after that and it always creeped me out.